So, this is Justine and Tom. So Hi, everybody. Uh, we're going to go through the process of how we came up with this finished project, which was the uh, annual report for the CRA in Gainesville that won us some sort of big award. Um, you're going to get to see the finished pieces really nice later, but this is where this is where it ended up. We can upload the PDF, um, too. The entire concept was that we were going to um, do a Sunday Funnies as they were in their full glory days, like a full top third Calvin and Hobbes. But beyond that, um, you know, in the, like 1910s and whatnot, you know, people like Winch and McKay were getting full pages. But that kind of thing is just done and over. So how do you convince the city government to do their annual report in the form of Sunday Pay Funnies and make it a comic, basically? That was the challenge. And now, and like I said, we won two awards for that, didn't we, Tom? Mm -hmm. And I don't remember whose idea it was. Tom says it was my idea to do this. And it may be, it doesn't really matter, but... What it really started was, I think Brendan was here from King Features, and you guys were talking about somebody who was working in the style of all the great comic cartoon strips, mm -hmm. and I thought, I really want to do something like that, but I don't want to do it half-assed. I uh -huh. really want to nail these styles, and this client went for it, um, and we pitched them another idea first that they weren't very excited about, and then before we pitched them with this, Tom came up with this, which was this four pages showing an original little Nemo and saying, now imagine if we told the story of one of your major projects like this. And then he had kind of just really rough and ready taped in things with just scotch tape to show the kind of strips we were going to go with and how we were going to lay this thing out. So that was the Calvin and Hobbes one that we directly did, which in fact... Um, you can see whether or not I got closer or not because right here it is in print. And um, so that's the original, and that's what I came up with. So it's very similar. Um, but the client saw this and they just, they just loved this. So this was really Tom's brilliant idea to put it in this format because it gave the client something visceral, something to pick up, something to touch. Yeah, spreading out something this big on the table was hard to, hard to ignore. Right, so even though it's such a crazy idea, but fortunately they've been into odd ideas, so they just totally went for it. And I thought, great. So then the reality set in, which was, how do you do something this insanely ambitious? As I said in the previous lecture, all of these artists, whether they're Walt Kelly or um, Charles Schultz or Hal Foster or um, Chester Gould, they all spent their entire lives learning to draw this way. I had to draw like all these artists um, on a deadline. So it was an enormous struggle. And one of the things that I'd said to Tom right away was, we can't put peanuts as the last strip on the back page. That's totally wrong. It was always like front and center. And it's only taking up part of the page down here, which you're cutting off on your video. Um, so we moved it to the top in the finished piece because that actually made more sense. Um, so here's the process we went through. Uh, I started out with these sort of layers of ideas for this one, which was the first page one here. Um, I won't go back and forth to all these, but you know, this is where it ends up. But what I start with is, is trying to lay it down, lay it out on paper, and then doing overlays to play with the positioning, rethinking how things are going to go, rethinking maybe how the characters are going to go. So I think as you can see, there's a lot of thought that goes into this process. And then I did a full uh, mock-up of the final piece. So these aren't the finished pencils. This is just a layout. I'm trying to get all the details just right. Um, so that was basically the process for coming up with the Winter McKay one. Um, this is where we did the Hal Foster down here. So you can see my sketches started out here. I really wanted to draw a camera to tell the truth, so we decided. I decided to kind of ditch the Hal Foster thing for that panel and go full full on kaiju. Um, this is basically for this panel here. This, you know, the sketch I was coming up with. Um, Oh, you can see here that I like the composition of this just right. It was exactly the right size for the original, so I graphite at the back of it, and then I transferred it directly to the original piece. So that's a trick I do a lot. If I, if I nail a sketch, and it's exactly the right size for the finished piece, which I try to do them that way, I'll just graphite them down. And you might be asking, well, why couldn't you have just drawn that in? There's nothing to it. But 
it was just everything was exactly where I wanted it and I knew I was never going to get it exactly where I wanted it without gritting it and all this and that seemed like a lot of additional work so this is what we went through to get to the final Batman one um, this was the idea they went with I I don't know if Tom drew that or me it looks like me I guess oh I didn't draw that I might I have had a hand in writing that one I can't remember okay and you can see here that I uh, would sometimes just put them on the backs of things that were unfinished you know so this is the one that we did in the style of cut. Now, this is definitely Tom's layout for this. That was because we, we were having a hard time. You were having a hard time writing it, and I, I sort of co-wrote that one. Or okay. That one and Dirk uh, or um, and Dick Tracy, I sort of took the reins on writing after right. After you couldn't get it exactly right. But everything else you wrote and drew yourself. So it starts with Tom's sketch there and ends up <clears throat> here, you know, with this. Mm -hmm. So you can see the, the evolution of what happened. So Tom comes up with the script, and then I came up with the pencils. So that's what the pencils look like. And what I decided was to go with a combination of Walt Kelly, which I showed you in the last lecture, and also with um, uh, uh, Wind in the Willows, Disney. Uh, then we had to do one in the style of the... Um, Oh, God, what are they called? Ripley's Believe It or Not. And since Bo Diddley was kind of a local guy, we have a place called Bo Diddley Plaza. And so we were laying out, you know, a Diddley's Believe It or Not instead of a Ripley's Believe It or Not. So I had to draw Bo Diddley. That's actually not the pose I ended up going with. You'll see that when you look at the next lecture, which has all that. It was about, well, here's Tom's original sketch for Dick Tracy. And it's funny, it seems like all you have here is a punchline. Uh, you're... Isn't that funny? Yeah, we didn't use that line. I should use that sometime. You need a more up-to-date watch. Who knows? You're not so bad, Admiral. So here's the you know original layout for this. You can see there's a lot of work going into it. Um, there's more here. This, I obviously crossed it out in mm -hmm. the rewrite because right. the, the, it just wasn't working. I don't remember why we wrote it. But I guess the reason I'm showing you guys this is just so you can see how much effort goes into it. This is another one of Tom's updated pencils for the same piece. Right. Oh, rocks you know, anyway. Which is kind of interesting. You'll also notice on the back of this one is one for uh, our Buck Rogers tribute, which we'll get to in a minute. So you can see all the effort that goes to. And this is about the time I'm starting to realize that the struggle isn't just learning how to draw like all these different people. The struggle is also that all these artists have a different language of line. So suddenly I'm beginning to panic about the inks as well as the pencils at this point because, you know, drawing like someone is one thing, but inking like them is a whole other thing. And this is for the Debbie Star reporter one. Um, you can see here on the back of the dirt gumshoe photocopy, I, I came up with a post. I didn't even use that mm -hmm. in, in the final piece. And I worked it all out and then went with something completely different, Tom. Um, uh, this mm -hmm. one. Yeah, no doorway, no. Yeah, they're just seated. She's seated all the time. Yeah, it came out looking really cool. Um, what do you remember about all this process, Tom? Um, Continuity crashing furniture in the background. <laughs> Um, so what do I remember? Um, no, I actually don't remember much aside from what you're saying. Um, yeah. You mostly did most of the hard work after the after our first meeting and setting up the the you know the the mock up, which you know took some effort and stuff. But but I remember every just every once in a while when you just couldn't get a story right that I, yeah. I sort of came and, and did my best. But most of them you got right on your own, and certainly visually you didn't need my help. So this was this was our Calvin and Hobbes one, and it was based on that classic Calvin and Hobbes of the um, Tyrannosaurus Rex and fighter jets. And then I thought, wouldn't it be better if it, if I took out the dinosaurs, which I started with here, and thought, let's make them Florida animals. So we went with like armadillos and things like that, mm -hmm. so that it was more local. So it went with alligators and armadillos instead of dinosaurs. And of course, you know, the the, the local government people they love that idea, right? <laughs> I mean, why wouldn't they? Um, so that was a whole nother level. This is Tom's original sketch for the Peanuts one. Oh, I didn't even remember. Uh, this one, believe it or not, I was actually, I think you wrote this one. But I think as you can tell here, I did a lot more. Maybe I did a lot of rewriting with it as we went. Yeah. Um, just to, because it, I think it was a great idea, but it wasn't really a strip. Tom, mm -hmm. Tom had a great idea. Like a, he had a great punchline, but there was no script to go with it. By the, by the looks of this, mm -hmm. there was no script to go with it. Um, so here we are starting to work it out. And I thought, you know, do I want this image down here? 
of, of Drooper or Slooper or whatever I called him um, to just be walking away in this panel? Or should I go with the Snoopy dance? And everybody said, oh, well, you have to do the Snoopy dance. <laughs> so we went with the Snoopy dance instead. This one I was actually more afraid of. Other than the Calvin and Hobbes one, this was the one I had the most anxiety about besides the Calvin and Hobbes because they were so foreign to the way I draw. Mm -hmm. And because I've seen so much third-rate peanuts done on packaging from, like, the 60s and stuff that I just did not want it to look <laughs> like that, which is why I was so upset when it was printed squashed or stretched or whatever because all those millimeters of getting the heads just right was blown. Um... And this one I really suffered over. I actually traced all these, uh, I traced these pencil ones, and then I tried to draw ones just like them without tracing them next to them. So, like, I would trace Linus and then draw <laughs> this guy, and then trace Sally, and then draw Shelly, and then trace Snoopy and change it into this. Oh, no, I, these were both mine, I guess. And come up with that darling front. Like oh, that's Snoopy. the tracing. Mm -hmm. Right, that's the tracing, and those are mine. So I was trying to really nail it and just change things enough, like making the nose bigger, giving them a spot, like little rascals, right? So that was coming into play. And then I thought, well, I need to make up some of my own characters. So who have we got? We've got um, Lucy down here. And I thought, can I make a Huffy character that's Lucy but not quite? And so I came up with this other character. And then up here I drew Tom and I as Peanuts characters. So that was, which we actually appeared in the final one, mm -hmm. um, which I'm going to pull out. I haven't been doing this all along, but... So there we are. That's me and that's Tom. <laughs> me and my bare feet with my curly hair and Tom with his shoes untied and his buttons missed. Totally Tom's. looks like me. Yeah. Tired. And, 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 Tom, and he's also, he thought he was in the coffee line. That was my personal joke. <laughs> it's, it's He's getting boiled peanuts, but he thought it was the coffee oh, line. So I was kind of making fun of both of us a little bit there. Um, so then what I did was, actually, in order to get it right, I traced a Charlie Brown. And then for that lineup one, I just transferred that in mm -hmm. every position and mm -hmm. then changed them as I went. Here we've got the dancing slooper. That's, that was, those were my first efforts, second efforts maybe to get that right. And then we started on the um, Lucky Dodgers one, which was our Buck Rogers tribute. You can see how loose it starts, just getting the script down, you know. And then here's another version of getting the script down. Right? We should that already. Oh, no, these are more dirt gumshoes. I forgot we all, did we? Yeah. I think so. so, yeah, so this is getting closer now. Um, and then finally what we get to are, here's what it looks like the finals look like. I don't have all of them, but I'm going to show you a couple. Um, that's really nice. You'll mm -hmm. be seeing a nice PDF of that. Um, this strip for the Batman, they rejected. They, I got to use this panel, though, in it, but they didn't like these. Which I like them better as drawings, but they didn't like the strip as much, so I had to redo them. And I, my heart wasn't in it. You can see when you look at the final that these are actually superior drawings mm. to the final because my heart was not I'd in it. I'd forgotten that part. Um, I'm not going to show all the. Oh, there it is, in fact. You can see I, I was bored. I just didn't want to do that drawing. Well, I don't think it shows, but. <laughs> well, it does to me, but that's part of the whole mastery thing, right? And then these are the assemblage bits of uh, Bo Diddley, which. You know, I draw things upside down. Here's the funny thing about the process is, you know, I do have this obsessive compulsive aspect to me. And I did this original version of Dick Tracy and I didn't think it looked enough like Chester Gold. So I redrew it and um, they're completely identical <laughs> line for line. There's absolutely no difference between the two of them, um, which is... I don't, kind of embarrassing, frankly. But, I mean, there there are differences, to tell you the truth. Can you think of a place minor. where there are some differences that um, maybe you would notice that we yeah, can Yeah, like, maybe just the way this guy was rendered. Um, oh, God. To tell you the truth, there's no difference at all. This car is weaker. Um, I see that car. Yeah. Hmm. The differences are very minor. Um barely worth talking about. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> it was just craziness on my part. I thought I nailed it like here. He's, here. he's great. The, what the do we call him? Guy, the uh, Luddite. The Luddite, yeah. Yeah. Here was our info dump panel, which is going to have most of the CRA information in it. Um, <laughs> and then I'm not going to go through all these originals because I'm going to be talking about them as PDFs for you, and the best ones aren't here. But, you know, there's that's the original Calvin and Hobbes. We can look at a couple of them. This was a nightmare for the inking, like right in here, uh, getting those loose lines and then back in here, uh, getting the, the loose openness of all that. Can you put my outfit back on? 
So getting so, them. Yeah, so the loose lines up here for me were really a challenge because how do you mimic looseness? Because if like I'm tight, you know, I'm worried about getting this to look just like Bill Watterson's inks. And how am I going to make it look like Bill Watterson's loose and chunky inks while I'm worrying about it? You know, so like, oh, really, this is the area that really I felt like I nailed it. It was right through here. Um, mm, yeah, so that area is fantastic. As we look through these, Tom, real quick, what do you what do you think about you know capturing the look of some of these? You know, how successful were we in the end? We. Well, <laughs> how successful were, were? This was an interesting one because because this was a generic. This was a more generic one. Like I don't think you specifically yeah. had a particular um, like Buck Rogers or. Yeah. Certainly not an Alex Raymond or anything like that. This was more of a generic sort of the space. The only person that came really close was um, uh, Gray Morrow. Oh, and that's late. He's later than that But he was working anyway. with markers. Mm. There's one in the Willows one, which I don't want to look at too much. It's not really my favorite. I mean, Tree's very Walt Kelly, but mm -hmm. it's a little bit lifeless and stiff. It just doesn't have the energy of a Walt Kelly. Well, it's definitely a little more, um, it's more rendered than Walt Kelly as far as the characters go. It's not always true. I, uh, we talked about that. It's really? weird. Yeah, there were like two Walt Kellys. There was this simple, mm. wild Walt Kelly, this highly rendered one. This one was my favorite. I just really was pleased with how this got, we really nailed this one here. Um. <laughs> the looseness of the grass. I'm very familiar with that, that style of grass. That stuff's looseness. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I couldn't find any Schultz that was this at all. He didn't do this in this way. Mm -hmm. That That's I had to insert Bugs some Bunny. other. Yeah, exactly. There's the lineup, which I traced that one Charlie Brown, and then to get the proportions right, and then just changed them as I went through. However, I do have this here. We first we showed that as we were progressing, we showed the client this. I marked off panels as I went because I was so overwhelmed by the enormity of the project. <laughs> so here you can see this was like our progress report. We were showing the client <laughs> really raw pencil states of things, you know, and me marking off to know where I am and where I'm not. The last three back there. And then I'm glad to say we have a finished pencil too. We showed them one of the finished oh, wow. pencils. I'm glad you kept this. I haven't seen yeah. this. Before. And by that time I was gathering fonts. Yeah. And what you guys will be more correctly. looking at in the next slideshow is the finished inks of all this, which we didn't really talk about in depth. But, you know, I, I led into it. Here's you can see one that's finished by you. Mm -hmm. And then here's the other. Wow, it's kind of cool to see the finished pencils in this way. Yeah. So look at all the layers of process and mock-ups. We have three mock-ups, layers of sketching. Fortunately, they paid us pretty well for this. So we were really able to spend more time and energy getting it just right. I didn't want to do this in any other way than just right. Mm -hmm. and that's really all I have to say. So, if, Tom, if you have anything to close out with. No, just, well, you know what? I mean, just to just to boost your ego a little bit, This was the this was definitely the project where I realized, like, almost all your ideas were good ones, and I should just not really even worry about um i should just let you go like go to the meeting let you say what's on your mind and then and then just be at your beck and call <laughs> really yeah. and since then i was just like well justine's got some idea i'm just gonna go with it i'll help her well thanks i <laughs> uh, two stories about meetings that are funny is i i tend to go to the meetings barefoot and in shorts and they're all sitting there in their business casual outfits, right? And at the last art meeting, I actually said to the client, nothing kills creativity faster than a committee. Um, can you put this on? I want complete creative control. And they gave it to me. So that was kind of remarkable. And we had another meeting situation where um, Tom said, oh, my God, Justine, I've never gotten out early, you know, because we got out 45 minutes early uh, because I tend to, like, just get right on point and stay there like that piece a lot so you'll be getting to see all these in their glorious um inked finished versions uh in the next slideshow